Hello, I'm Ron Baker, and welcome to Empowered at Last. Today we're going to be talking about relationships. There are so many facets of relationships that we need to get clear about so that we can be effective and successful in the way we relate to others. I would say even more than half of every relationship is up to you. Why? Because if you take responsibility for setting up the relationship well, people are much more likely to fall in line with the healthier choices that you bring to the table. So today, a very important clue, which I'm calling, let people be in the grade they are in. What do I mean? And how do we put this into a context? So let's go all the way back to the beginning of our lives. We are a product of what we have learned mostly in the first eight years of our lives about every facet of self, every facet of life, every facet of relationships. The seeds come from the early, the early modeling that we received and whatever we learned became our normal. This is who I am. This is who I feel safe to be. This is who I don't feel safe to be. This is who I have to be. So many choices come out of those initial comfort zones or practice patterns of mom and dads. So whatever you learned was the modeling for initial relationships. You watched their relationships and you had your own relationships with your siblings and everyone else. Whatever was guided and encouraged and modeled became the imprints about relationship. Really important to understand because in the world I've lived in, almost no one has had a clear conscious education about self or about relationships. How many times have you sat down where people growing up said to you, I just want to explain to you how to have healthy relationships. I want to talk to you about communication. I want to talk to you about how to set yourself up well. I want to talk to you about healthy boundaries. I want to talk to you about how safe you are to share yourself authentically. I want to share with you how safe you are to have an evolving process. That is not the planet I grew up on, and yet it is exactly what I've been teaching for the last 25 years in my School of Self Mastery in New York City. So dang important that we start to get this education. I'm so glad you're here. Good for you. You're here to listen to some thoughts about relationship, which says you're open to the education and the suggestions. And if you find those suggestions helpful, I hope that you will implement them into your life because you are responsible. What does that mean, responsible? It's up to me? It's all on my shoulders? No. Response, able. Able to respond to your own life. You're responsible for creating the success in your life that you want. And there is no such thing as any part of your life that is not about relationships. Starting with the one you're having with yourself, relationships with everyone else in your life. So important that we begin a conversation with some healthy clues to put together an approach to life that sets you up really well. So let's look at this particular subject. If what you learned in life never really taught you that you have value, that you can trust your authentic self, and of course, starting with mommy and daddy, they're going to embrace all that you are, your whole self, your challenges, your wounding, and your greatness, all of your potential at every stage of your life. Hmm, that is what is possible but so few people have ever received that education that they haven't been able to bring it to you or to me. I did not grow up that way, though my mom and dad did the best they knew how. They brought everything that they had learned and were sharing those things with me. 
I don't think I ever heard a single thing about relationships, and my mom and dad did not know how to have a successful communicated relationship with themselves, with each other. I did not get that modeling, so the great news is our potential to learn and show up and pay attention and to explore healthier and healthier options, making adjustments to what does not work, is entirely possible. The good news here is that I have spent tons of my life focused on making those observations, making those enhancements and improvements, and I've been teaching this to people for 25 years. I know what you have to look forward to here, and today we're going to give one main clue. If you never learned how to value yourself fully every stage of your life, then what happens is that we become frozen like a child who says, you determine how valuable I am in the world, mommy, daddy. You're just a little person. You're just three, five, seven years old, and they acknowledge you, encourage you, nurture you, invest in you, which teaches you about your value. If they don't know how to do that fully and consistently, then you end up with self-doubt about whatever parts were not educated and encouraged in you. You end up in fear, shame, and judgment. You end up not trusting your right to have a process and that you are valuable, that you are lovable, that you are a sacred being at every stage. Let me ask one adult reality question here. Were you more lovable in fifth grade than you were in first grade? Most people can look at that question and that model and go, no, I wasn't more lovable in fifth grade than I was in first grade. But they don't necessarily apply that into their lives, saying, when I'm at the beginning of learning something, I'm just as safe and lovable as I am once I become really good at it or masterful at it. If you didn't get loved and valued and championed through every stage of your development growing up, you might not be trusting that in your life. I've done this with thousands of people around the world, and I've never met anyone yet who truly was aware and trusting of that process. But the great news is you're planting that seed now. You are already lovable at every level. But prior to knowing how to integrate that fully, let's talk about how you can add this one perspective. If you don't already know how to love and value yourself, and you got frozen looking to mommy and daddy to validate you, what you were choosing, who you are, what parts of you are lovable and safe and acceptable. If you got frozen still looking for that and they never really provided it, then chances are you are like I was for tons of years of my adult life. Tons of years of my adult life. Looking to others to be the source of my validation. I need you to like me. I need you to validate me. I need you to think I'm wonderful. Because I didn't know how. No matter where you find yourself in that process, what we tend to do in relationships is put onto the other person, even friendships, not just your primary, we tend to put onto the other person the responsibility for validating who I am, where I am, when I am, how I am, and we don't even know that we're doing it. You may be even saying, I don't do that. But ask yourself these questions. If you make a breakthrough and you make a revelation in your life, do you find yourself getting frustrated with those around you who aren't aware of that, who don't know how to do that, who just haven't had that growth and that part of their process? Do you know how to allow them to be in the grade they're in 
whether it's at a grade that's not as caught up as you just became, or whether they're in a grade that's further evolved in some ways about who they are than what you've done. I find most often people want others to validate their choices. Oh, we go out for dinner. Well, I wanted a glass of wine. Why aren't you having a glass of wine? Are you saying that having a glass of wine is wrong and bad? We want them to validate our choice rather than going, I'm going to make an individual choice. Please feel free to make an individual choice for yourself. Or let's just talk about someone having a learning curve, learning how to communicate, learning how to have uh, manners, learning how to say something in a succinct, clear, effective way. Do you know how to hold a space of acceptance and nurturing and value of other people in your life, no matter what level they're in? Most people discover, I've been expecting someone to reflect me or be like me and validate me more often than I had realized now that I'm looking at this. And if you're not yet conscious, just pay attention. Over the next weeks, when you're with other people in your life, see if you're in acceptance of who they are, when they are, how they are, or if you project expectations, judgment, shame, competition, some version of not embracing where they are. I have news for you. If you're projecting it onto them, it's just likely a reflection that you're not accepting yourself at every stage of your journey. So as always, having a healthy relationship with others is going to come back to having a healthy relationship with yourself. So please start with purposefully interrupting any judgment and shame that you project onto yourself. Oh my God, I can't believe I didn't know that. Oh my God, I can't believe I made a mistake. Oh, I'm not very good that I'm not going to, I'm not going to put myself in a position to have to reveal that I'm only at this level, not at that level, that higher level. Begin to interrupt your judgment and your shame of self. Begin to champion that anyone that's at a level of greatness in a certain facet of their life started out as a beginner. And some things are going to be easier to have a learning curve with, and some things are going to be more challenging for each individual person. One of the ways we tend to compensate where we have an easy learning curve is by judging others who don't have an easy learning curve with that same thing. Wanting them to validate or to compare and none of that will set you up well. Why does it really matter if you have, let's just name three people that you truly care about in this moment. Have them in your head in this moment. Why does it matter with people you truly care about, that they are in the exact same place as you, or that they get it in the same way that you do. If you allow people to be where they are, you can plant seeds that might enhance someone. They can plant seeds that might enhance you in a different way. This is a truly healthy, mutually valuing relationship. So today's subject, do an inventory. Do you allow people to be in the grade they're in? Or are you stuck in wounded narcissism, the limbic brain that personalizes and compares? Interrupt anything that doesn't serve you well. Replace it with purposefully practicing acceptance of self and acceptance of others. And then you can start to feed and encourage and inspire, not from 
have to and should, but from let's be a gorgeous inspiration for one another without expectations. A gorgeous inspiration without expectations. That is a healthy relationship. And that is the thought for the week. I hope that you will make awesome discoveries and adjustments and that your life will continue to get better and better and better. In closing, I encourage you to tell your friends about this podcast. I am relatively new at being on this podcast and YouTube channel, and so I want to reach people in ways that will truly enhance their lives. And just think about it. If your friends and family know the clues and hints that I'm planting for you, it's going to make your job a whole lot easier to create healthier connections in your life. So please, I'd love it if you would pass it on. Comment below. Let me know the things you want to talk about, the breakthroughs you're having, the challenges you're having. I will answer and respond in future podcasts. With all that said, have a great week. I will see you soon. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Before we close, I wanted to encourage a couple of things. Number one is to go to ronbaker.net. There you will find lots of clues for how you can deepen this conversation. You can also find a way to get the booklet, An Essential Guide to the Nine Nurturing Needs. This is going to be a core focus of how we're going to enhance the quality of your life from the inside out in all the episodes. So I encourage you to go there to get an overview of those nine nurturing experiences that we all seek more than any other thing in our lives. I also want you to get involved in the conversation here. I really would like to talk about the things that are important to you, the things that you're concerned about or excited about. We live in a wacky world that is changing constantly. We need to learn to connect to ourselves, to count on ourselves, and to count on one another. So please either get involved at ronbaker.net or in the Facebook page, which is Empowered at Last with Ron Baker. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to deepening this conversation about life. And I close as always, choose well, live fully, and by all means, be good to you. Have a great week.